All right, everybody, welcome to a juicy little presentation where we where I'm going to demonstrate a couple of golden paths for an internal developer platform that is following roughly this design. We have a backstage portal up here acting as the front end of our platform. We have a nice differentiation here between application source code and platform source code on the version control layer. We have an uh, abstraction layer here with SCORE, a workload specification. Um, for the integration delivery layer, we have GitHub Actions, a registry as the back end of the platform. We have an orchestrator, a human tech orchestrator, which is a graph based back end. We're using, in this case, Humane Tech Deploy for the deployment. Um, I'm planning to record another one with Argo CD and GitOps uh, setups. Then we have an Amazon resource plane. We're using Amazon CloudWatch for logging, and we are using HashiCorp Vault for secrets management. And what I want to do today is that I'm just going to show you a couple golden paths. Um, and we're going to start with impersonating an application developer who is scaffolding a new application and a new workload in um, yeah, starting from Backstage. Now, it's important to understand that we have that separation of application source code and platform source code. That means that the application source code repository does not contain any app and infrastructure configurations. So we have separation of uh, concern. And then we're actually generating the app and infrastructure configuration and in a cyclic resource graph with every deployment just in time with the back end here. Um, so that means if we hit scaffold in the Backstage portal, we will actually scaffold an application source code repository. So let's do this. So this is Backstage. For those of you who don't know this, this is the catalog view where I'm seeing all of my different services. I can create a new one up here. I can see tech docs, API docs, tech radar, et cetera, on the left-hand side. Um, this backstage instance is pretty bare bone. It's just uh, it's just activated the feature for the Humanitech plugin so that it has a, a proper backend. And that means that while backstage is essentially acting as the presentation layer, we have the backend, uh, the platform orchestrator handling the logic. Cool. So as a developer, I want to scaffold a new service. So I go ahead and I click, click create here. And this is my templating view. So I see all of my different templates that I can use. And I'm just going to select that pod info service template here. And I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to uh, call it Neuropin. I always choose small villages next to me, although I'm convinced that this actually is spelled this way. Whatever. Cool. Um, I'll hit review and then we'll create this. And then what actually happens is that Backstage reads out, reaches out to the uh, GitHub template API, and we are getting this application source code repository cloned, and then our CI pipeline runs and the registry, et cetera. We can actually um, then um, see that this is uh, pushed to the orchestrator, so the back end. The orchestrator reads in the application source code repository and the platform source code repository generates the app and infrastructure configurations, wires everything up, injects the secrets, and then serves this and makes sure the resource plane is in the right state. Cool. So far, so good. Let's actually look at this beautiful repository that we have created here. So we have our Neuropin uh, repository, and it's just, just our normal workload source code here. And the thing that stands out is that we now have no app and infrastructure configurations in this uh, um, application source code repository and really just this abstract um, description of the world called SCORE. So SCORE is an open source project that we've just donated to the CNCF and they have accepted this now. Thank you, CNCF. Um, and it's a way for developers to describe the relationship between um, the service and the dependent resource. So we can see here that this service has a DNS and a route. So it's really very simple and straightforward. Cool. Now let's go back into our uh, um, backstage instance. What has now happened is that uh, the orchestrator has created that, all of those different components. So we can look at this in the catalog. 
so we see that uh, the deployments have been this has been orchestrated by Humanitech, and we have our workload here and it has an external dns and a route and we can actually look at it running here um i can just click here cool so here's our little pod info service and we can ping it and everybody's happy fantastic so far so trivial now i could just take this um github repository run git clone and then I have everything set up, including my pipelines and my tests and my development environment and a namespace got created and everything is following my security standards, etc. Now, let's say you've been developing the service for a while and all of a sudden you um, want to add a Redis to it. And unfortunately, your development environment is blocked and you have to figure out how you're going to deal with that and that's the perfect situation where you probably want to have a pr environment and um, first of all we want to add that redis so what we do is we go into that score file and we add it and that's obviously something that i would usually do in my in my ide but i'm just gonna do this here and you say give me cache of type redis i don't have to say how that Redis is supposed to be configured. I don't need to say, um, you know, you know where this is going to run. I don't need to know much about the target environment. I can, but I don't have to. Um, all of this will be automatically taken care of by the orchestration system in the background, which will take this abstract environment agnostic input. It will check how your platform and infrastructure groups want Redis to look in a certain environment, and then it will create it. Cool, when I'm happy with this, I will commit the change. And now because development is still blocked, I'll create a new branch for this commit. And we'll go ahead and we will create a pull request. Okay, so that means now we're actually again taking that information and we're reaching out to the orchestrator and we say, hey, orchestrator, we now need Redis. And um, then uh, we also need a new PR environment. And that PR environment is supposed to use the same infrastructure configurations as development, but just new infrastructure um, so that my colleagues can continue working in development. I can get my PR environment and everybody's happy. So this will take a couple of seconds. Um, while this is processing in the background, I quickly want to give you a sneak peek on how the backend, the orchestrator, determines how to configure that Redis. And the, the key here is that the platform and infrastructure groups have configured the rules how this is supposed to be done. And the rules are configured in what we call a resource definition. So if you look at resource definition uh, for Redis, um, then this would look as follows. Um, I have my resource definition here. And that says, should the workload require Redis, which is what we just requested, and the criteria equals something, in this case, you know, this is an example for a production Redis, then I want you to use this parameterized Terraform file to update and create this. You can use Terraform, you can use Crossplane, you can call the Amazon API directly, or really, obviously, any other cloud and on prem setup. Um, but this is how this works. You're saying, what's the type? of resource, what is the context, and then how are we supposed to create and update this. And this is really just a plain parameterized Terraform file that we're seeing here that we can forward input parameters to. Okay, so while we've been looking at this, uh, our little um, system has already created the PR environment. So here, right from GitHub Actions, we can look at the new uh, URL that was created again, and we can see the div. We can look at the resource graph that was created, and everybody's happy. And obviously, we can also see that in backstage. So now we have our development environment, and we have a PR environment, and this has a cache now, which is exactly what we wanted. In this case, because this is a development environment, we've not uh, chosen to create Elastic Cache for Redis, but we wanted to save money. So this is a, an in-cluster Redis created right here. So that is perfect. Now, let's say 
I am the same uh, developer and I'm happy with uh, how that turned out and I want to merge my pull request into development. So I am going to confirm my merge and then the uh, GitHub Actions is going to ping the orchestrator again and say, hey, let's merge this uh, request for Redis back into development, make sure development is updated. And by the way, we do not need um, the PR environment anymore because I'm done and we don't want to cost too much resources. And so that means we can tear this down and that's exactly what happened. So our PR environment is gone and we are now going to update our development environment. Uh, and you can see that we have now in fact uh, pulled in the external cache here and everybody's happy. Yeah, so this was a super quick demo of um, two, three golden paths for developers that makes it, but it, but it showed how convenient this is, how streamlined it is. It ga gave you a sneak peek of the degree of automation and standardization because I really just have to express what I need without having to bother about a lot of the underlying things. And the system will uh, actually try to standardize as much as possible, save you as much cost as possible, be as secure as possible while being flexible to make sure it meets exactly the requirements of how you want to have your infrastructure and configurations configured. Yeah, so this was a little demo of Backstage as the portal, as the front end, the platform orchestrator as the back end here on Amazon Web Services. That's obviously available really on any cloud and on-prem set up. If you have any questions, let us know. And I'm soon going to do another demo focused on the infrastructure and platform experience. Until then, all the best and see you soon.